It's the fishing invention of the century. There's never been anything like it. Popeil's Pocket Fisherman. You remember the Pocket Fisherman. Fits in your glove compartment. Mini tackle box in the handle. Why just flip up the special DuPont nylon rod and you're ready to fish anytime. And if you know the Pocket Fisherman, you probably know some of these. All of these products have one thing in common. They were all brought to you by Chicago's legendary inventors and salesmen, the Popeil family. Today, Ron Popeil is still at it, hawking his wares at the International Housewares Show and on TV infomercials. Over here, I have a couple of great paring knives. Selling has always been easy for me. If you have a product that works well and you price it right, people are going to buy your products. Four easy monthly payments of only $13.33. Ron Popeil's company, Ronco Inventions, is no longer based in Chicago. But Chicago is home to the man who may be the Popeil family's biggest fan. You just nest your potato on top like this and then push down the plunger. Perfect slices every time. As the city of Chicago's official cultural historian, Tim Samuelson is an expert on Chicago's great contributions to architecture, music, and design. And this is what is known as the Whipomatic. Now, as much as you may appreciate your pocket fisherman or Whipomatic, you probably never thought of them as any kind of great contribution. If you were doing this with a little electric mixer, even a fancy one, it would still be soup. But right now, so how did Tim Samuelson get so hooked that he would collect hundreds of Popeil products and create an exhibit at the Cultural Center? It started out with the design. My background actually in architecture and design and many of their products were really great product design. This Vegematic is 40 years old. They were made so they could be manufactured efficiently. They were made so that they would work efficiently. And uh, in many cases, they're just beautiful as objects. Never fails. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you the greatest kitchen appliance ever made. It's called Shopomatic. Of course, it's not enough to have a good product. You have to be able to sell it. And for years, Ron Popeil has been one of the masters. You will receive with your Chopomatic at no additional charge a valuable recipe book containing 50 secret recipes by world famous chefs. But the Popeil story begins with Ron's father, Samuel Popeil, and his uncle Raymond. Their mother was from the legendary Morris family of New Jersey. The Morrises were renowned pitchmen, salesmen who sold their household gadgets in colorful street demonstrations. By the 1940s, the Popeil brothers had become expert pitchmen themselves, and they headed for Chicago. And they start making their own gadgets. In fact, they concentrate on making gadgets that you could then wholesale to other pitchmen. So they became one of the leading suppliers of pitchman products. Here's another great little product. Ron Popeil grew up with his grandparents in Florida and barely knew his father when he arrived in Chicago as a teenager in the 1950s. But Ron did not learn to sell from his father or uncle. Out here on Maxwell Street, we have a little special. How much are they? They're just $2 per one. His role models were the Maxwell Street pitchmen who sold products by the Popeils and others. If you want to clean it, you want to wax it, you want to seal it, you want to protect it, this is the one. You don't have to wash that automobile. By the time he was 15, Ron Popeil was a pro. I kept my stuff in a fish store, and I would set up on the street and sell my product during the day. I'd have a couple of Coca-Cola boxes I'd be standing on and uh, give a demonstration uh, every six minutes, take four minutes to collect all the money and do that all day long until mid-afternoon, at which time I would fold up everything, put everything back in the fish store and go home and count the money. 
he'd get the biggest crowds. He used to pitch down at Woolworths during the week down at State and Washington Street, and people would just come and just watch all lunchtime long and watch him demonstrate. But it wasn't the pocket fishermen that made the Popeels famous, or even the Vegematic. It was television. In the 1950s, the new medium needed a new kind of advertising. Everyone likes coleslaw, everyone that is except mother. The reason she doesn't like it, because she's the one that's got to make it on that old grater. And oh, the scrapes on her poor knuckles. TV stations needed the pitchman as much as the pitchman needed TV because here were people who knew how to sell by sight. So soon, TV was just filled with former Maxwell Street County Fair pitchmen. The answer to all your problems is in this little bottle, Vitamita Benjamin. Of course, the Popeels didn't invent this kind of advertising. It was so common in the early days of television that Lucille Ball was spoofing it four years before Ron Popeil first brought the chop matic into our living rooms. Or if chop matic doesn't do everything I told you it would... That first chop matic commercial lasted four minutes. But by the time the Popeil brothers released their first ad for the Vegematic, TV commercials had to be under two minutes. The solution? Talk faster. Look how easy Vegematic makes many slices at once. Now you can slice a whole can of prepared meat at one time. Isn't that amazing? In the 1960s, Popeil ads were everywhere. And while we may have found the commercials humorous, or even annoying, we still bought the products and made the Popeil brothers millionaires. Many people will look at TV advertised products and associate them with something that doesn't work and it's cheap, but not with the Popeil products. In fact, I actually have some really early Popeil products and they're in my kitchen, not just as decoration, but actually we use them. After a while, Ron Popeil wasn't satisfied marketing products for his father and uncle, so in 1964, he and a partner started their own company, Ronco. Are you a non-smoker bothered by smoke from someone else's cigarette or cigar? Now put an end to this unpleasantness with the amazing smokeless ashtray by Ronco. Ron didn't manufacture the products like the Popeil brothers. He devoted his energy to marketing. His first product? The Ronco Spray Gun. This spray gun package comes with enough fertilizer, weed killer, and insecticide to do a small honor garden. The commercial cost $550 to make. Ron used his own voice and a friend's car and sold a million spray guns. Ronco went on to release a seemingly endless array of products. Sometimes they marketed existing products like the seal -a meal but most were new inventions like the inside the shell egg scrambler, the record vacuum, and of course, Mr. Microphone. Hey, good looking, we'll be back to pick you up later. And while most of the products were battery operated, you would never hear a Popeil utter those words. Instead, they were cordless electric. And remember, it's only 9.98. After a while, the success of Popeil and Ronco wasn't only making them rich, it was also making them celebrities. How many times has this happened to you? You have a bass. You're trying to find an exciting new way to prepare it for dinner. You and whether or not they liked it, the Popeil family's celebrity got a boost in a 1976 Dan Aykroyd bit on Saturday Night Live. Here's how it works. Catch a bass, remove the hook, and drop the bass. That's the whole bass into the Super Bassomatic 76. Now adjust the control dial so that that bass... I get very serious when I create a product. And when Saturday Night Live is doing stuff about me or my family or the products that I have, I was a little fearful that people would stop buying our product thinking that they were just comical gadgets or jokes of some kind. And not to be taken seriously. Super Bassomatic 76. You'll never have to scale, cut, or gut again. Order again. The Bassomatic spoof didn't hurt the Popeels at all. In fact, it secured their place as pop culture icons. I'm your host, Ron Popeil. And Ron Popeil doesn't seem to mind a bit. A 1999 episode of Futurama featured him as a talking head in a jar, kept alive by his own inventive technology. 
But wait, there's more. And Popeil provided his own voice for the episode. That up and coming young star. By the late 1970s, Ron's father, Samuel Popeil's health was declining, and so was the business. In 1979, Popeil Brothers was sold, and within two years, it was gone. In the mid 80s, Ronco was going strong, but went bankrupt when its bank recalled a loan. For the next few years, Ron was back at county fairs selling to live audiences. I ended up buying all the inventory of the company myself personally. And the fastest place to liquidate it was at the county fairs. Over here, I have a piece of Swiss cheese, and look. By the early 90s, Ron Coe was again flying high, thanks to the infomercial. No longer limited to 30 seconds, Ron was back to his roots as a pitchman, selling kitchen knives, food dehydrators, and of course, the Showtime rotisserie. You set it and it's as simple as that. You know, it takes one day to shoot an infomercial and I do the editing also and it takes about three weeks to do that. And and my workload for that product is basically over with. Ron Popeil has sold more than a billion dollars worth of Showtime rotisseries, more than all the other Popeil and Ronco products combined. Whether you sell on Maxwell Street or whether you sell in a, the Woolworth store on State Street, selling is selling is selling. And fortunately, I had products that the people like. Remember? You receive all items, the chop and the famous recipe book, all for $2.98. Now here's your announcer to tell you how to order. 